Hello and welcome to today's webinar, uh, AWP Implementation, Where to Start, presented by Nick Malouf. Uh, we're happy you've joined us today. Um, and with that, we'll go through the agenda here. First up, we're going to go through a safety moment, and then we'll give you a little brief info on who we are at O3. I'm going to introduce Nick, and then he will launch into getting started with AWP, and then how O3 can help you. And then I'll hit the key takeaways and we'll answer some questions at the end. And then I'll provide you some ways that you can learn more after. So with that in mind, just some housekeeping. You can submit questions throughout the presentation via GoToWebinar, your little uh, control panel over there during, in the questions tab. And uh, we will answer all of them that we have time for. And then as a reminder, you will receive a copy of today's uh, presentation slides and a copy of the recording. I will be emailing those out the next day or so. So be on the lookout in your inbox for that. And that, let's uh, do a quick safety moment. So uh, with it being summer, um, for most people around the country, we uh, thought it'd be timely to hit some heat exposure safety because there's a big difference between heat exhaustion and heat stroke. And you can see this diagram here showing you some of the um, symptoms for each and the difference between those. So some tips to prevent heat stroke during this hot weather summer. Uh, you can wear loose fitting clothing, lightweight clothing, protect against sunburn, always wear sunscreen, always drink tons of water, really any kind of fluid, but mostly water. Uh, always be careful with uh, whatever medication you're on. I know certain allergy medicine can have reactions with the sun. Um, and never leave anyone in a parked car. It's, uh, it, it sounds like common sense, but it's always important to remember, especially with children and car seats, always check your car before you leave. Uh, and take it easy during the hottest parts of the day. Just know when uh, the hottest parts are and maybe avoid that time being outside. And always just get acclimated. To, uh, Kind of a simple way to prevent heat exhaustion is to be outside uh, before you start doing any kind of um, strenuous activity. And then again, here's the diagram and some tips here. If you've got heat exhaustion, you can treat that yourself uh, just by going inside, to air condition, drink more water, um, take a cool shower, just cool your body off in general. And then if you're having heat stroke, though, you need to call 911. And that's uh, the more severe uh, symptoms there. So you need to actively take measures to uh, remedy that. And so, yeah, just some common sense things to keep in mind this summer. Uh, it could save a life, it could save your own life. And just always be aware and keep that top of mind. So who is O3? We are the market-leading agile software built specifically to support advanced work packaging. It's the only solution on the market with true work package management, no matter the size of the project, from small caps to mega projects. O3 is scalable and can support your AWP maturity journey. So here's our speaker today. This is Nick Malouf. He's the O3 product education lead. He's worked at O3 for over three years. He provides instructor-led training for new users creates self-paced training and other educational content, and he leads O3 support team. So he is our go-to guy for all things implementation when um, using software to support your advanced work packaging program. And he's going to walk us through where you can start doing that today. So thank you, Nick, for joining us. Uh, we appreciate your time, and I'll turn it over to you. Absolutely. Thank you, Tori. And as previously mentioned today, we are going to be talking about how to get started with advanced work packaging. Now, before we get started with AWP, it's important to take a step back and look at this from a thousand feet up. These are all the steps that you're going to want to address when getting started with AWP. And we'll be discussing each and every one of these today. What's important is to realize that implementing AWP is a process. Some of these steps are going to take a bit more time and effort than others, but each one is equally important in getting your AWP procedure set up and rolled out successfully to your team. Now, from beginning to end, we're looking at roughly six to 12 months to achieve all these things. Maybe that figure surprises you, maybe it doesn't. 
this rough timeline lets you know what kind of investment to expect um, as you get started with this process. If someone tries to sell you snake oil and says this can be achieved in a matter of days or weeks, they clearly haven't done this before. Sure, you can say you're doing AWP after a few days, but a successful implementation takes months and is well worth that investment. You want to make sure that you get this right the first time. Now, on to that first step, which is to make sure you have all the right people in the room. I'm sure you've heard the expression people, processes, and technology. The ordering of those words is very deliberate as people should always come first whenever you're rolling out a new process or a new tool. You want to make sure you have the right people in the room from the very beginning. This change will affect everyone and you want to make sure that their feedback is incorporated into that new process. You don't want to be midway through your implementation just to find out there's a team or a group of people you haven't accounted for. So who all is going to be involved in that change? The first person is going to be your AWP sponsor. They're the ones endorsing your AWP program and are key in securing that executive and management level buy-in. Think of them as your primary supporter. They'll be checking in at each step of the way, delivering project updates to those that need to get them, and making sure that everyone is kept involved. But they're not going to be the ones driving it. That is going to be your AWP champion. They're the ones that are going to be spearheading your implementation of advanced work packaging. This can be someone with prior experience that you've hired externally, or it can be someone internal that gets the knowledge needed to lead this entire effort. And while we're going to be covering this later, and by the end of today's webinar, I'm probably going to sound like a broken record, but I cannot under or I cannot understate the importance of training. Uh, many organizations don't consider this on account of the AWP champion role being relatively new, but this isn't something you just want to casually toss on your project manager's plate. It needs to be a dedicated role either within your organization or on any of your larger projects. Ultimately, what's important here is that somebody has the authority to provide guidance on AWP best practices. Your AWP champion is going to be serving as your guiding lights of sorts as you start wading into unfamiliar territory. Now, these aren't the only two people, of course. We're going to be getting everybody involved at some point, but these are the first two uh, stakeholders that you want to identify early on. Next, we need to understand why this change is happening. And if you're at this stage, congratulations, it does take a certain level of awareness to realize that something isn't working. It might sound simple, but again, its importance cannot be understated. And understand, understanding why something isn't getting the job done is going to let you know what parts of advanced work packaging are gonna bring the most benefit to your team. It's also going to help you understand what your key objectives are in implementing AWP. Now, once that's done, once you've realized why that change is necessary, you have a couple things you're going to want to consider. First, are your goals measurable? Sure, you want to improve, but what metrics are you going to use to showcase that improvement? Do you want to mitigate schedule slip and cost overrun? Maybe you want to improve productivity on the job site while also boosting the safety of your field personnel. Go ahead and start thinking about these goals early on. You want to have them ready as we get to later parts of this process. Second, we want to consider how we're going to measure those goals. This is gonna be something that we'll talk about later in today's webinar. And once you've figured all those things out, you can start using them to build out your business case. And this is something we'll talk about a bit later as well. But for now, your business case is going to be your justification for why advanced work packaging is the future for your organization. This is important for your AWP sponsor, as it's what they're gonna be using to secure and maintaining that high level buy-in but it isn't just your executive and management level teams that you're going to have to convince. This is where change management comes into play. I'm sure this has been up on the forefront of everyone's mind is, okay, we have this cool idea. How are we going to successfully roll it out to everyone when you know, maybe we've been using uh, some process for quite a while now? The thing is, uh, though this change might be uh, for the best and you know, many of your executive and management level teams agree on this, it doesn't mean you're not going to encounter resistance along the way. You need to be prepared for groups that are not as accepting of this transition. Now, the key to overcoming this is simple, but again, very important, it is going to be communication. Again, you want to make sure everyone's feedback is accounted for 
as you start creating your AWP procedure. The best way to win over detractors is to show them that you're listening to them and that this new process is going to be an upgrade, not just meaningless change. You can't expect everyone to take what you say at face value, and you're likely going to have to approve your intentions by getting their feedback and making sure it's incorporated into the final product. Get that involvement at all levels of your organization. Now, another part of starting your AWP implementation is going to be choosing where you want to apply it first. Now, as you might know, if you've seen some of our other webinars, we endorse the crawl, walk, run approach. Choosing a multi-billion dollar mega project with heaps of scope for your first implementation of AWP is going to make it very challenging. You want to start off with a smaller project that has a, a simpler scope. Use this as a learning opportunity so that when AWP is applied on a larger project, you have plenty of lessons learned to drive that experience. That being said, you want to make sure the project is large enough so that AWP actually makes a difference. Generally speaking, we recommend pilot projects being around the $100 million TIC. Bonus points, if you have a similar project that won't be using AWP, this allows you to compare both projects and quantify the benefits of your AWP program. Of course, we do have much more to say on this topic as we've done uh, a couple webinars on this stuff. Um, you can see those on the right-hand side. Tori is going to be sending out links to these webinars as part of today's post-webinar communication, as well as links to some other webinars we'll be, we'll be mentioning later on in today's discussion. Now, chosen your pilot project, it's time to decide what you actually want to measure on. And to that effect, you'll want to consider what KPIs you're going to track. And to do so, we need to remember what our goals are in implementing AWP. It's going to be these goals that ultimately drive what KPIs we will be measuring after all. Do you want to make sure your material arrives on time? Do you want to reduce the time it takes to execute out in the field? Again, maybe we're being extra mindful of job safety as we should. Most of these KPIs are ultimately going to be dependent upon what stage your project is in. So if you're in the design phase, for example, you're going to be concerned with how quickly and efficiently your engineers are executing drawings. Whereas if we're a bit later in the process, say construction, we're likely interested in the average time it takes to complete an installation work package out in the field. We do have a lot more to say on this topic as well, as again, we have another webinar we did last year, which we'll be sharing the link to after today's webinar. Whatever your KPIs are, you'll want to ensure that they are standard across all of your projects and your portfolios. Sure, some of these projects might have unique measurements, but the goal is to be able to use your past measurements, things you've captured from previous projects, to forecast future ones. Standardizing your reporting lets you lean forward and anticipate instead of just learning what you could have done better after the fact. And here's that question I pitched again, how are we going to measure all this? We will be getting to this in just a moment. But before we do that, I want to talk to you about the benefits of using KPIs to measure and track pro the progress and success of your AWP program. Collecting data is the first step, but after that, you're going to have to actually do something with what you've learned. The most obvious comparison, again, is going to be between those projects that are using AWP and those that aren't. This is going to provide you the business case that we discussed earlier for continuing to use AWP after that initial pilot project and expanding it to other ones. So if your non-AWP projects have a worse safety performance or maybe a lower productivity, you can point to AWP as the contributing factor in, in improving all of those things. Now, by tying your KPIs back to your goals, you can also show the management team that AWP was able to address the problems that you were targeting. And maybe even some issues that you weren't even expecting. There is one small caveat here though, it is very hard to prove that AWP was responsible for improving this performance. People <clears throat> will often cite correlation without causation, something else may have been responsible, but if you can show that you met the goals for your project, that should be enough to allow for an expansion of AWP onto other projects. And then from there, you can show, if you can show consistent results across those other projects, then nobody can really argue that AWP was responsible for those gains. In the long term, you want to be able to tie your gains back to your business model, particularly in terms of estimating. 
project estimates are based on historical performance. So if you can show consistent improvement with using AWP, you can lower your estimate numbers. <clears throat> now, how are we going to track those KPIs? I've asked this question a couple times now, and we are finally getting to it. And that is going to be your AWP toolkit. What you're going to use to accelerate your adoption of advanced work packaging. One common pitfall we see in new AWP programs is settling for suboptimal tools. For many, this falls by the wayside as they iron out some of those initial steps that we've talked about previously. Clipboards and binders, disparate Excel spreadsheets, legacy systems, all these things are only going to get you so far. And starting off with these things introduces a lot of what we refer to in the software industry as technical debt. So what is technical debt? The term might be a bit unfamiliar to you, but the concept I can assure you is going to sound very familiar. Long story short, it's all the future rework that's gonna be needed because you chose an easier solution instead of the right one. In the long run, you're just creating more work for yourself if you settle for a suboptimal tool. Not only are you implementing a new AWP procedure, but you're potentially having to course correct and find a new tool because again, you settled for the easier one up front. And if you won't believe it, we also have talked about these topics in webinars as well. Again, be on the lookout for those links in today's follow-up communication. Now, with where our last topic was going, I'm sure it's no surprise that what we're uh, going to be segueing into is how O3 can make getting started with advanced work packaging easy. O3 is purpose-built on AWP best practices. We understand AWP and what right looks like and have developed a tool that makes implementing it easy. We also understand that many people are on different journeys in, in beginning advanced work packaging. Maybe you're choosing O3 early on in the project life cycle, or maybe you realized a bit later in the process that you'd like to use it. Regardless, we can cover you at any step. Actually, we can cover you at every step, from FEL2 and FEL3 all the way to commissioning and completions. O3 is, uh, is built to support you at each and every phase. Likewise, we understand that some of our clients might have a bit more AWP experience than others. Again, O3 doesn't require a college education or an extensive background in advanced packaging or technology, just a willingness to change. Now, setting goals is important, but if you don't have the means to track them, you might as well not track them at all. O3 offers dashboard reporting that showcases your data in real time. This takes a lot of the burden off of you in supporting your KPIs, as all the data already lives in your system. It isn't a separate step to get it in there. With hundreds of reporting options at your disposal, you can set up your dashboard reporting once and easily replicate it for all of your other projects. Not only do we offer reporting at a project level, but at the portfolio level too. This lets you stack one project up against another and see what right truly looks like as you set your AWP procedure. moving forward. And dashboards aren't the only thing that can be templatized in O3. Projects only need to be configured once, and then they can be used as templates for future projects as well. Disciplines and constraints, approvals, execution activities, and workflow settings, these things can all be wrapped up into a template, meaning less redundant entry and clicking. It's also another step you can take in standardizing your AWP procedure. Uh, this is going to make standard or make keeping your AWP process in line across all of your different projects, which in turn means easier administration moving forward. Now, getting started with AWP and implementing a new tool might seem like a lot, but we are here to help. Again, we take the crawl, walk, run approach while keeping the end in mind. We get you er involved early on in your implementation of, of, of O3, uh, which allows you to work alongside us as we configure your projects. This gives you the hands-on experience you need, which is crucial uh, to ensuring that you and your team is self-sufficient. I think we can all agree that no matter how many training sessions you sit through, it's ultimately going to be that hands-on experience, you know, using, uh, applying what you've learned that actually allows that knowledge to set in. Now, we do want you to be self-sufficient, but we're not just gonna leave you once everything is done, of course. We'll always be there to help with your more technical inquiries, or if maybe if you want best practices as you start to optimize your usage of O3 as well as advanced work packaging. 
Another mistake new practitioners of O3 make is underestimating the importance of training. And I can confidently say that this is something that we see with new adopters of software as well. Starting out, it's important to understand the basics of AWP. This might be your awareness training, where you make sure you understand all of those underlying concepts of advanced work packaging. And once that understanding is confirmed, you can start moving on to more targeted uh, topics and putting in that practice. And this is a great time to mention our partners over at Concord Academy, whose e-learning solution allows you to learn everything you need for AWP on your own time from wherever you would like. They offer courses that cover the basics like advanced work packaging one, as well as deeper dives into topics like the work-based uh, work planning certification. Long story short, if you want to implement a new or impl implement an effective process or tool, your users need to understand how it actually works. So again, I think I say it one more time after this, but do not underestimate the importance of training. Now, we are going to be heading into the conclusion of today's webinar, but I do want to give you a few key takeaways, just some summarization points before we do part ways. The first one being, you want to make sure you have the right people in the room from the beginning. So again, you don't want to be part way through your implementation of AWP, only to find out that there's a team or maybe a group of people that you didn't account for. And understanding why that change is needed, it's going to be what drives your goals, as well as what KPIs are going to be measured on your project. It's also going to be instrumental that you understand why you're changing, so you can communicate this to all the other stakeholders involved in the process. Again, change management is going to be a pretty big part of getting that AWP procedure created and then successfully rolled out. Again, you want to choose a smaller project with simpler scope, but at the same time, make sure it's large enough so that AWP can actually make a meaningful change. The idea here is to crawl, then walk, and then run. Use that pilot project as an opportunity for lessons learned that you can then apply to future projects as you start to expand your usage of advanced work packaging. And again, choose the best solution, not the easiest. O3 is purpose-built to support AWP in ways that things like spreadsheets and legacy systems can't. You want to get this right on the first try. You don't want to have to redo this later on down the road as it is going to create a ton of work and complications. And then don't underestimate the importance of your training. Your team needs to be able to understand the new process in order for it to be effective. And I promise that is the last time I say that in today's webinar. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn things back over to Tori who will be leading our Q&A segment. Thank you, Nick, for that great information. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so first question, how long does a typical software implementation take? That is a good question. Um, so typically, we say that an implementation, an O3 implementation, is going to take between one and three months, depending on things like the complexity of the project, how ready your data is, how on board everyone is. Um, if you have your data ready, if we're dealing with, you know, maybe like a pilot project, for example, um, factors like that would probably have it lean more towards that one month marker. Um, but, you know, maybe you're having a tough time wrangling your data. Maybe it's going to take some additional work to get those teams on board. Maybe it's just a really big project with a lot of things to consider. That's probably going to have it lean more towards the three month mark. Okay, here's another one. How is turnover organized in O3? Uh, so O3 supports, you know, I think uh, I think the, the the saying is 10 different work packages. So we do have turnover work packages um, that have many of the same functionalities as our other work packages. So one thing that you'll learn, if, you know, if you do get into O3 is that setting up one work package is relatively similar to setting up all other types of work packages. It's really going to be the process that drives those work packages, or the constraints, the approvals, uh, that is going to be different. But you know, you can configure your turnover work packages to have whichever statuses best align with your process. You can use you know automatic approvals to have you know stage gates of sorts 
um, and then constraints up front to make sure that everything is ready for those turnover work packages before they are executed. All right, um, let's see. Who needs to be involved in the beginning and then do they continue to be involved? Yes, so kind of like we talked about earlier. Um, so the first person you're gonna wanna identify as your sponsor. Uh, they're gonna be involved, uh, you know, pretty much all throughout the project life cycle, but more so on the sidelines. Again, they are there to secure that buy-in from you know, the higher ups in your organization. And then using those project updates that you deliver to them, they'll use that to maintain buy-in. Um, the second person we talked about today was your AWP champion, who's gonna be way more integrated into the whole process. Um, they're ultimately going to be the ones leading your implementation of AWP. Um, that being said, you know, kind of like I mentioned towards the end of that slide, eventually everyone's going to get involved. So you're going to want to account for that as you get those initial steps up and running, you know, all the way from your construction managers, your work-based planning coordinators and work-based planners to your field personnel, you know, all of those guys are eventually going to be involved. Okay, let's see. Probably have time for one more question here. How long does it take to get started with AWP? Uh, so that kind of goes back to our first slide. So, you know, again, you can take a few days to say you're getting started, but um, ultimately the, the entire process of, you know, kicking off your AWP program and getting those pieces in place is going to be about six to 12 months, so half a year to a year. Again, that might sound like a surprising figure, but the goal here is to, to put in the work needed up front to make sure that by the end of that time range, you're done. You've done everything correctly. You're confident in that assessment. Um, you are good to start moving on to those next steps of rolling it out to your project and getting everyone involved. Well, that is going to do it for us uh, for the day, but we appreciate everybody joining us. Um, thank you to Nick for presenting all of this wonderful information. We would like to invite you to learn more. Uh, we've got many ways you can do that. You can visit us online. That's the quickest and easiest way. We have a, a massive amount of resources at your disposal here. Uh, you can download case studies, check out past webinars. Uh, you can watch quick overview videos of our solution suite. You can connect with us on social media and follow us uh, for our newsletter. That way you'll never miss another event or any new content. We're constantly putting out new content and information regarding the industry and new features that our software is able to do. And you can always request a demo from us as well if you'd like to see everything in action. So don't hesitate to ask us um, ask us anything else. And if we didn't get to your question today, please also you can contact us. You can email Nick uh, Nick Maloof at o3 Solutions. And again, you can visit us at our website, and that's www.o3 Solutions. So uh, I, as again a reminder, I will be sending out this recording and the presentation slides via email. So be on the lookout for that. And uh, I'd like to thank everybody again for joining us today and taking time to uh, learn more about AWP and how O3 can support you on the path to success. So uh, with that, have a great afternoon, and we look forward to seeing you at our next event. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, yeah thank you, and thank you all for attending.